On Friday, May 19th, we get a beautiful new moon in Taurus that is not an eclipse. We're done with the eclipse season. How exciting. And this lunation looks quite lovely. It's co-present with Jupiter that has just entered Taurus on May 16th. And it encourages new beginnings that bring stability and abundance. Let's take a closer look and break it down for all 12 signs. My name is Anastasia. I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive astrology. If you'd like to work with me, check out the links down below or visit my website anastasiadoesastrology.com. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave me a like or a comment. Anything helps um, put my videos in front of more people, spread awareness of my work and encourages it also encourages me to create more content for you guys before we dive in a couple of announcements i created a candle called moonlit trinity it's of this beautiful pink color it smells like strawberries and cream and it has the moon in taurus conjunct venus in taurus so this lunation represents the moon in Taurus, new beginnings, and this candle can be beautiful for romantic new beginnings, for creative self-expression, for baby making, and I highly, highly recommend it, especially if you have a weaker moon in Capricorn or Scorpio, or if your Venus is an airy Scorpio or Virgo, as well as if you are a Capricorn rising trying, trying to conceive, or a Scorpio rising needing some relationship help, you know. If you're curious how this would help you, let me know your placements in the comments below and I'll try to advise. And second announcement before we start talking about the new moon is I am hosting a travel retreat in Costa Rica in late September. It's a six day retreat that will involve a few astrological workshops, a lot of adventures, a lot of beautiful nature, and what a better time to mention it than a new moon in Taurus, the perfect lunation for slowing down, planning vacations and travels. So definitely check it out. You can still get the early bird rate and save $100 and you can befriend me and a lot of magical, exciting people. I am really looking forward to that. So the new moon happens at 11.53 a.m. Eastern on Friday, May 19th at 28 degrees Taurus. So if you have any placements between 25 and 29 degrees Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, or Leo, it is likely to affect you even more. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it's not an eclipse anymore. So that is super duper exciting. And, you know, we still have a lunar eclipse in Taurus coming up in late October, but there is a refreshing energy of being done with the eclipse, Mercury being direct, Jupiter entering Taurus. I think finally we can experience a sense of clarity, a sense of new beginnings that are lovely and exciting and encouraging. So this new moon to me has that beautiful potential. And it's ruled by Venus and Cancer. It sextiles Mars and Cancer, sextiles Neptune. So there's a lot of focus on Cancerian topics, stability, love, nurturance, family, right? Like being rooted, nesting, and Neptunian energy, which is a lot more dreamy. Taurus is the sign of birth and new beginnings and fertility. So something you are working on is about to be born. Like you're sort of brainstorming important things, right? Like you're getting to bring forward new projects or even become a parent potentially. That would be like the most literal manifestation of this new moon. Um, you're focusing on material gains, tangible results, something you can touch, something you can feel. It could be building a home. It could be creating, you know, painting a nursery. It could be writing. It could be starting a business. There's definitely a desire for like material gains, financial stability, bringing in new resources. Um, and yeah, like letting things, letting things kind of come to life, letting things be born. And I talk a lot about Jupiter entering Taurus in the video I posted about Jupiter, Jupiter in Taurus. 
The video I posted, yeah, recently, it, it talks about Jupiter and Taurus. I recommend checking it out because it's a really big shift. And I think having a new moon fresh from Jupiter entering Taurus kind of plays into Jupiter and Taurus really well. So check out that video. So the eclipse is ruled by Venus and Cancer. Venus and Cancer has triplicity dignity. So she's pretty kind of happy in this loyal, familial energy. So whatever we're working on, is directed towards having strong connections, having joy and feeling protected and nurturing something that we are emotionally attached to. Um, there is a sextile to Mars and Neptune. Basically the trine between Mars and Neptune gets activated by this new moon. So it also feels like Mars and a trine to Neptune is action in line with ideals, action that helps other people that inspires other people, that gets something going. We're more likely to feel more idealistic at this time. Just make sure you're not getting too excited about the possibility. Just stay grounded. Use that Taurian energy to make a plan. It's an earth sign. Be ready to be patient. Be ready for things to take a little bit to develop, right? Maybe until the lunar eclipse in Taurus that's coming through in October. So um it's an exciting you know it's an exciting energy for relationships for material success financial success abundance making changes to your diet potentially right especially if you are a sag rising making changes to your living situation kind of making improvements experiencing creative breakthroughs and just an overall sense of groundedness. Perhaps you've been overwhelmed and emotional. We just had this, the lunar eclipse in Scorpio. How was it? <laughs> I think it's been it's been tough. Um, and this new moon just tells you that you know things can be complicated emotionally, but you really need to nurture your body. You need to focus on being present. You need to focus on things that are important. And sometimes things that are important are things like getting a massage and taking good care of yourself. Look, so let's take a look at the 12 rising signs and see what this could mean for you. I prioritize rising sign because it represents the starting point of the chart and from it everything else builds, right? Like if your rising sign is Cancer, Taurus will always be your 11th house. So the new moon will always activate your 11th house versus your sun could be anywhere in the chart. And so it's less accurate. But long story short, listen for your rising sign first and then for your sun or moon. So if you are an Aries rising, the new moon is happening in your second house. It's ruled by Venus in the fourth. New moon in the second house calls you to achieve more financial stability. Um, it's ruled by Venus in the fourth, so the financial stability can be oriented towards starting a family. Maybe you're starting to save enough money to, to start a family or to buy a property. Perhaps in the next six months, you will be actively looking for a home. Um, it can bring new opportunities. There could be financial opportunities that are connected to your family. Maybe you get... Um, an inheritance or something, or you get offered to become a part of the family business, potentially making money through imaginative and creative ways is also likely, as well as getting a raise, a bonus and a recognition. If you are a Taurus rising, there's a new moon in your first house ruled by Venus in the third house. And the new moon in the first house is a rebirth. It's the time in which you are venturing on a brand new chapter of your life. It's ruled by Venus in the third. So the new chapter has to do with change in mindset, um, change in your communication style, change in your everyday life. And the change in the everyday life could be for multiple reasons, right? It could be internal where you decide to start treating yourself better, you start eating healthier, or something happens like you give birth to a child and your everyday life shifts and you become a parent. So like there's a major transformation ahead of you potentially. Third house also deals with your ideas, your skills, your hobbies, your business, your knowledge. So the transformations you're going through and the new beginnings you're experiencing could be connected to 
taking on a different role in the community, taking your business further, being ready to teach, maybe going back to school, um, maybe starting a blog or starting to kind of show up in a more visible way, as well as you know, third house represents siblings and neighbors, so maybe you are partnering up with them. Or just experiencing a sense of physical change where you are, you know, starting to exercise regular, regularly or you're changing your wardrobe potentially. Or you're becoming like an influencer, you're starting to be more visible and sharing more of your ideas and creating more content. If you are a Gemini rising, the new moon happens in your 12th house. It's ruled by Venus in the second house. And it feels like new moon in the 12th feels like release of something from the past, a sense of better clarity about your mental health that could be somehow tied into your financial situation or your values, right? So with Venus in the second house, maybe you're starting to value different things or maybe your financial matters demand attention. And so with the new moon in the 12th house, you are examining your attitudes towards money, your attitudes towards values, and even your overall attitude towards yourself, right? Like this could be new moons in the 12th house are always very eye-opening, very healing and like like here definitely you know like a chance to examine how you're being negative how you're being destructive of yourself or tough on yourself when it comes to financial problems or when it comes to disagreements and um issues that you have with other people of values and of course this could also be your opportunity to bring something from the shadows of the 12th house into tangible reality and make money from it or announce it and kind of express how much it matters to you, right? Because 12th house is the blind spot, which also includes your hidden talents or your not integrated part of self that is wanting to be born and wanting to come out. So take good care of yourself, pay attention to your intuition and be ready to either cleanse and heal or to be more present and expressive when it comes to your passion projects. If you are a Cancer rising, there's a new moon in your 11th house ruled by Venus in the first. So this is lovely. Venus in the first is a sense of you wanting to enjoy life more, you wanting more fun, you wanting even even like you showing up with more alignment with who you are, being more confident and secure and charming. And the new moon in the 11th house says that the more you do that, the more people who are on the same page with you will be attracted to you. So it's it's very, to me, it feels like a call to just look in the mirror and say something sweet to yourself and be confident and be loving towards yourself. And then the surroundings of yours are about to change, right? So a new moon in the 11th could mean joining a new group of people, connecting with new friends, um, meeting people you can start a group project with, 11th house is social media, it's collective kind of involvement. So maybe, you know, a friend offers to start a podcast and you start a new project together. Maybe you get more involved in terms of volunteering and charity. Even having new dreams that perhaps align you with other people where you want to teach or you want to inspire, you want to connect um, is likely here. But it's exciting. Jupiter just went into your 11th house. Jupiter is in its joy in the 11th house. So you are on the precipice of like meeting new people and just feeling more connected, I think, and more involved. And let me know if you're feeling it. Let me know if you feel like your dreams are transforming and your social engagements are transforming as well. If you are a Leo rising, I talked a lot about Jupiter entering your 10th house. Now we have in the video on Jupiter in Taurus. Now we have new moon in the 10th house ruled by Venus in the 12th. So Venus in the 12th is interesting as a ruler, right? Like Venus in the 12th might want to rest and sort of have work that gives you a chance to relax more. 
Venus in the 12th might want, might want to travel. So maybe you're choosing, maybe you're starting to prioritize travel or you're starting to prioritize imaginative work, which is also part of the 12th house. And as a result, your career or your outward choice of self-expression transforms because new moon in the 10th house is very much about your place and your visibility in the world. So a new moon here could represent stepping away from a job to start a business or stepping away from a job to travel. Could also be a chance to start a job that lets you travel more or starting a job that's more imaginative, right? Getting a raise, getting a promotion, um, getting new exciting opportunities. So this could be very, very wonderful start to something like this energy will take some time to develop. It's not necessarily immediately just, you know, <laughs> unicorns and rainbows, but it's, it's a start to something, I think, beautiful because it will let you to express yourself more. And let me know if you're a Leo rising, what are you working on? What are you seeking for your career? What would you like your professional life to look like? And if you're not working, let's say you're retired, this could also just be about your role in the collective, right? Like maybe you want to be more involved with your buildings, um, homeowners association, or maybe you want to volunteer more and you're just kind of getting ready to, to become more visible, become even, even be ready to share some of your knowledge and work with other people. I can see here. If you are a Virgo rising, there's a new moon in your ninth house ruled by Venus in the 11th. Venus in the 11th wants to connect with friends. It wants to meet new people. It wants to maybe pursue dreams. And new moon in the ninth house says that your dreams will involve education. They might involve becoming a teacher or going back to school, perhaps picking up a class or two to finish your degree or getting a brand new degree, right? If you are, if Venus in the 11th aligns you with other people, the friendships or other groups of people, um, the new moon in the ninth could be a sign that your alignment with them involves traveling. So maybe you're starting a travel, maybe you're hosting a travel retreat, right? or you're just traveling with your friends. Um, there might be a legal matter that is beginning. Maybe you're applying for a visa, maybe you're applying for a green card, or you're kind of taking care of some kind of important documentation, as well as ninth house rules writing. So I could also see this as a start of like a book or a screenplay or a novel, something that is close to heart, something that reflects your ideals and your beliefs. Ninth house rules ideals ideals and beliefs. And so the new moon in the ninth house could also be very much a sign of your attitude changing and like you sort of going through a mental shift. Now, if you are a Libra rising, there's a new moon in your eighth house. Jupiter just went into your eighth house and the ruler is Venus in the 10th. So Venus in the 10th house is very focused on having joy professionally, on being able to do what she wants to do and be known for being diplomatic and fair and just. And the new moon in the 8th house says that in order to get to that professional point, you're likely to have to deal with some financial matters. Maybe you need to clear your debt so that you can take more debt <laughs> or so that you can you can be more free professionally or you need to get a loan in order to start a business right so new moon in the eighth could definitely be a sign of like financial shifts and changes there might be new collaborators there might be some kind of agreement someone coming into your life and you're sharing with them you're working with them but that possibility you know, that, that collaboration can actually bring more freedom financially for you. Maybe you are, you know, joining forces with somebody else. And as a result, you're kind of more successful together because that's what eighth house is. Ultimately, eighth house is the place of unity with other people. It's also the place of unhealthy dependencies on other people. So the new moon in the eighth house could be your chance to break away from some of those unhealthy, restrictive dependencies or 
relationships but i'm kind of excited for it because like i said it looks like a good new moon and could be professional could be personal if you are a scorpio rising there's a new moon in your seventh house ruled by venus in the ninth this is interesting right because venus is in the ninth house bringing up topics of travel legal matters foreign people education but the new moon is happening in your seventh house so i wonder if you're starting a partnership that helps you get through a legal matter or you're starting a partnership that involves travel or a partnership that involves writing together with someone right um or teaching together with someone so there's definitely or maybe you're even maybe you're even going on a trip to see your foreign lover potentially right um taurus is your seventh house jupiter just went into your seventh house so big changes and big new beginnings when it comes to your romantic relationship to you know kind of start something commit maybe your partner going through a change is also quite likely here like maybe they're going through a rebirth of sorts because that's what taurus rising is going through for scorpio risings your seventh house is the same thing but for your partner so i definitely see some kind of like alliances forming with us right and alliances could be helping you in promoting writing education travel legal matter or they can be alliances that are more personal and maybe maybe kind of romantic new beginnings so exciting let me know how you think this will show up for you in the comments below now if you are a sagittarius rising there's a new moon in your sixth house ruled by venus in the eighth and i feel like for sag risings this could be very healing very health very everyday life oriented because venus in the eighth wants to work with other people wants to pay off debts wants to have some kind of better agreements with people or even heal eighth house represents kind of sudden things that happen to us all the fears we have around depending on somebody else or having other people depend on us so with the new moon in the sixth house i think you're looking at your immediate life you're looking at your health you're looking at the choices that you're making and questioning how can you change them in order to make your life more enjoyable it's a tourist new moon in order to be more productive but also potentially more self-reliant right or happier or six house new moon could be very much like you're starting starting therapy right or you're starting to exercise or you're starting a savings account where you're putting some money aside in order to be more secure um new moon in the six with jupiter being here could also be a sign that you're about to undertake some major project a major even you know like become a parent or become or start a new job or go back to school it's like something that will be heavy and maybe even require financial investments but it will be worth it because it's going to build better work-life balance in your life and you know let me know how you see this if you are a Sagittarius rising in the comments below I know I know from already even talking to some of you that you have been making positive changes to your health and that is I applaud you for that <laughs> if you are a Capricorn rising there's a new moon in your fifth house ruled by Venus in the seventh so instantly conception right conception of a child pregnancy is very likely especially for those of you who are in a relationship and are trying um because it's venus in the house of relationships new moon ruling the new moon in the house of children uh, partnership business partnership professional partnership relationship with somebody who can help bring forth your creative baby is also likely conception of a creative idea that involves a partnership that maybe even involves working with your spouse or with your significant other very fertile new moon super fertile super like water not watery i guess like earthy tangible so set your intentions journal 
you know, if you need some additional help, additional help getting pregnant, get my Moonlit Trinity candle. It was created with Capricorn on the Ascendant, so it's the thing, the candle for Capricorn Risings to get. Um, so yeah, like new beginnings in the life of your child, new beginnings in your creative projects, new beginnings in romance as well. I've, I can't believe I didn't mention it until then, but fifth house is romance and Venus in the seventh wants romance that will be long lasting. So maybe you're meeting someone, maybe you're going on a date and the date leads to another date and then five more and then you end up, you know, dating this person seriously and getting married to them eventually. So lovely new moon. I'm excited. Let me know what you're seeking right now in your life if you're a Capricorn rising. Now, if you are an Aquarius rising, there's a new moon in your fourth house ruled by Venus in the sixth. And Venus in the sixth feels like, you know, like either some kind of health changes or hard work, problem solving, dealing with something. A new moon in the fourth could be very much investing into your home, doing some kind of labor in the home that requires a lot of problem solving, a lot of kind of managing resources and people and time and energy. Um, so, so new moon in the fourth can definitely be a sign of like needing to go on an important, hard, time consuming venture that either involves improving your living situation, maybe you're looking for a home, selling a home, renovating a home, or it can also involve your family, right? Like maybe a family member moves in with you or you move in with them and it's temporary but it will require some adjustment right so there is definitely new beginnings when it comes to family and living situation so i can see you moving making changes to the home i can see you reconnecting with family building better relationships with family taking care of your health right because venus is in the sixth house fourth house also represents comfort and security so potentially you are going through a more like deep transformation where maybe you're healing from the past and committing to taking better care of yourself so that you feel more self-reliant and happy within. Last but not least, if you are a Pisces rising, um, tell me how often do you hear last but not least <laughs> and offer some suggestions for a better introduction for Pisces rising. I'm always, always open to suggestions. So Pisces rising, new moon in the third house ruled by Venus in the fifth house. Venus in the fifth house brings the energy of fun, joy, creativity, children. And you may be seeking more joy in your life. You may be um, prioritizing romance, prioritizing creative self-expression and parenthood. And the new moon in the third house is all about changes in your immediate environment, changes in how you communicate and how you go about your day and how you um, get involved with others. Even your neighborhood can undergo a change, right? Like immediate environment might mean that you are adjusting your home to better fit your incoming child. <laughs> But like maybe that's the case or, you know, you're adjusting your immediate environment to better fit your um, surgery coming up, right? Or you're learning new things and getting kind of sorting through your skills to decide what's more important for your new career. There might be like a lot of uh, back and forth, a lot of interactions, a lot of figuring things out. Third house also represents your mind and your mentality and there might be a mindset shift, you know, you're learning something new, you're communicating about what's important to you, you're writing, um, you're trying to speak a new language. So it's, it's very significant, especially with Jupiter being here in terms of like you taking on a different role or like you taking on ownership of your skills, taking ownership of your everyday life and implementing positive change, implementing new beginnings that put you in front of other people and help you take on a different position in society and ultimately like express what you believe, right? Like put your words, put your knowledge in front of more people. And maybe that involves moving. Maybe that involves 
readjusting your life, starting a business um, and learning something new or teaching something new. So this is it. I'm excited for this new moon. Definitely check out my Jupiter in Taurus video. It goes in depth and depth talking about Jupiter and Taurus, the history of this planet in the sign and gives you a lot of information and a lot of insights. And thank you for watching. I'll talk to you soon.